Okay, we're ready to start the next session. Um, Michael Catanzaro is going to be talking to us about WebKit security updates. You've probably seen a lot of information on his blog about these and how distributions and various other people do it wrong, but I'm sure he's going to tell us how to do it right. Hi. Uh, I'm Michael. I work for Galia on the web browsers team. Uh, so uh, my involvement with GNOME is uh, primarily uh, WebKit and Epiphany related nowadays. I'm also on the release team. Uh, as David said, I'm going to talk to you about uh, WebKit security updates today. Uh, so uh, uh, just a quick overview to get started. Uh, why do we care about security in a web browser? Most of you are probably all aware of this already, but uh, when uh, web browsers uh, process untrusted input from websites, uh, HTML uh, pages, when they render it, there's lots of uh, software bugs in the C and C++ code that uh, uh, handles these pages. Buffer overflows, no pointer references, use after freeze, and so on and so forth. Uh, attackers use these vulnerabilities uh, to take control of your user account on your computer and do bad things with your computer. They read your files, they uh, add your computer to their botnet to attack other, uh, other people. Uh, so so that's, uh, that's why we care about uh, browser security. It's a big problem for Windows users in particular. Uh, so, uh, how do we? Uh, what uh, strategies do we use to mitigate uh, these attacks? Uh, the primary method used nowadays in web browsers is sandboxing. Uh, we uh, uh, have a containment mechanism in the web browser to uh, mitigate the effects of a successful exploit. It's too hard to rewrite all the code to defend against these exploits. So instead, we limit the permissions it has to execute. So on Linux, the only way to get a good web browser sandbox, well, we have two options now. You can run uh, Chromium, which is the more mature option, which is, uh, it has a very good state-of-the-art Linux sandbox. Uh, it's probably your best bet. Uh, or Flatpak, which uh, has its own sandbox. It's uh, not really production ready yet for a web browser, I don't think, but it's, uh, it's promising technology, very promising. Uh, if you're running Firefox or WebKit-based browsers, so you have no sandbox at all. And that's the problem because it makes it much, much easier for uh, attackers to exploit a vulnerability. Uh, you can also use a more secure programming language like Rust, but it's not practical to rewrite all of WebKit in a new programming language. So uh, we need to talk real briefly about uh, the different type of WebKit ports. WebKit is not just one uh, library that's the same on every platform. It's different. There's lots of platform-specific codes on different platforms like uh, Mac OS, iOS, Windows. Uh, on Linux, uh, there's a, uh, the WebKit ports that we're primarily concerned with here. The, one, the port that's relevant to GNOME is WebKit GTK. That's what I'm going to be talking to you about today. The security situation for other ports differs. Some ports don't get any security updates at all. Uh, really anything except the Apple ports, anything not maintained directly by Apple, is not getting security updates unless it says WebKit GTK. Uh, what about Chromium? Uh, brief history here. Uh, Chrome, Google Chrome, Chromium is a fork of the WebKit project. They're not using WebKit directly anymore, so I'm not going to talk more about them today. What about Qt WebKit? If you use any KDE technologies, uh, you're some of you are probably aware that uh, Qt WebKit uh, used to be an official upstream WebKit project. Uh, unfortunately, a few years ago, the Qt developers decided they didn't have time to maintain it anymore. We deleted all of their code. The, if you're using uh, KDE applications that use WebKit, they've had no security updates in three or four years now. So uh, I'm not going to talk more about that today because that's KDE and KDE's problem, not GNOME's problem. Uh, there's people working on that, but it's uh, that's a different matter. So, WebKit GDK. Uh, quick introduction to WebKit GDK. If you're using a desktop Linux app, it's displaying HTML. It's not a cute app, it's WebKit GDK. Uh, our flagship application is, of course, GNOME Web. Here's a bunch of other applications that use it. These are just the biggest ones that I found in a quick uh, internet search the other day. Uh, some of them are a little surprising. Uh, you wouldn't think I mean, these are obviously not all web browsers, right? Uh, but they find interesting uses for HTML rendering. Uh, so uh, 
until recently, uh, our biggest problem with uh, our biggest security problem was that we don't have any did not have any security advisories at all. So when we had a security problem, there was no way for distributions to find out about it. There's no way uh, they could prepare. Uh, they, they they had no reasonable way to prepare updates for those uh, situations, and so that was a big problem. But we've recently started uh, doing security advisories on a regular basis. We release it to distributions, the package webkit. We release it on OSS security mailing lists. Uh, so distributions are getting the advisories, are getting the CVEs now that they need in order to get updates out to users. Uh, so for most of the presentation today, I'm going to talk to you about how well that's been working. But there's one more big snag. One more big snag we have to talk about first, which is WebKit 2. So uh, we actually have two different APIs in WebKit GDK that applications can use. There is the old API, which is WebKit 1, and there's a new API, which is WebKit 2. Why do we have two APIs? Well, it turns out that um, maintaining, uh, writing a web browser that's stable and doesn't crash when rendering web pages and doesn't hang is actually uh, almost impossible. Uh, so uh, what we've done is what mo all modern browsers do, uh, except Firefox is still catching up, they split uh, the web rendering code into different tabs. So uh, different processes run in each different tab. And so when one tab crashes, the whole browser doesn't go down. When one tab hangs, the whole browser doesn't hang. And so that's, uh, that's why we have a new API for WebKit 2, uh, making, uh, making things multi-process changes everything. Applications can't continue to use the same old API. Uh, so we have this confusing version scheme that I want to mention because this confuses almost everyone who's not already familiar with it. Uh, if you see a 2 in the version number of your WebKit package, that doesn't mean it's WebKit 2. Uh, if you see 2.4, it's actually the old WebKit 1 compatibility package that all distros are keeping around, so they don't have to remove the dozens and dozens of apps that have not upgraded to WebKit 2 yet. We removed the WebKit 1 API in WebKit version 2.6. Okay, So you'll have two packages on your distro. The secure one is going to have a number greater than 2.4. The insecure one is 2.4. All right? We're not talking today about insecure 2.4. That's what all your apps are actually using. So that's, that's a big security problem in itself. I'm just focusing on the new modern version, not getting updates. Uh, OK, so yes, we had a transition period for apps to switch to WebKit 2. Uh, none of them did. Uh, then we deleted the WebKit 1 API. So uh, uses the WebKit 1 API and distros using the old compatibility package. There's tons of vulnerabilities. Uh, we, I saw some confusion on the internet recently. We did a security update for WebKit 1, the 2.4 version, and people thought, oh, there's not so much of a problem. There's a security update. Well, no, we just took a few fixes that were very easy to backport. The only reason we did that update was because the GTK developers broke WebKit 1, and we needed a new release for compatibility with GTK 320 themes. All right, so... Uh, Distros, distros. I'm going to talk very quickly here. Uh, I'm going to go through some major distros, and we're going to see how they're handling WebKit updates. Uh, the spoiler is that any distro not on this page is not doing very well. Uh, we have Arch and Fedora. They're doing great, A+. Uh, every time we release a new update, uh, it goes out to their users in a reasonably short period of time. Magia is going a little slower, but they... Uh, they have the latest version. I'm not sure if it's in stable now or if it's in updates testing, if anyone who uses Magia wants to check that out. But if, if it's not out already, it's coming soon. So that's good, too. Uh, OpenSUSE, they have a rolling release distribution, which gets the latest stuff. But uh, their actual stable distribution, uh, Leap, uh, does not have the latest WebKit right now. There's a few vulnerabilities out there that we've announced publicly. We're going to announce a lot more in a couple weeks. Uh, um, five of them uh, potentially allow for remote code, remote code execution. So uh, this is uh, just uh, this is very typical um, for Linux distributions to fall behind in WebKit updates. Either they're not paying attention, or they're just slow for whatever reason. Um, What's uh, interesting about OpenSUSE is that a lot of Linux distributions just don't update WebKit at all. 
OpenSUSE actually did do a major update. They released this distribution with a 2.8 version of WebKit. And so they did do a major security update that fixed lots of issues. They just haven't kept up with it since then. So better than nothing. A lot better than nothing. Uh, the enterprise distros, Red Hat, SUSE, Linux Enterprise. Uh, a lot of people think that since you're using an enterprise Linux distro, the company is taking care of security updates for you, right? No, these, they don't get any security updates. That's, that's, uh, that's the situation. Uh, so uh, the problem is uh, these distros released with WebKit 1, right? Right when we did the switch over to WebKit 2 and dropped support for the WebKit 1 API. So there's no pra they don't have any practical way to get security updates. Uh, even if they wanted to, it would be a tremendous amount of work to backport all those patches that we're not, not uh, doing for them upstream. So I'm not even, it's, I'm not even complaining about this situation. They're in between a rock and a hard place here. Uh, but uh, you don't want to mistakenly think that uh, these WebKit packages are secure. They are not. Uh, SUSE, I have question marks here. They used to have their code on uh, uh, their open build service, uh, their public instance. And I checked it a few months ago, and it looked like they weren't doing updates either. But uh, they, I couldn't find it when I went to make this presentation, so I just left it as question marks there. But I think the situation is the same as with Red Hat. Ubuntu. Ubuntu is big, right? Uh, surely they're taking care of at least their LTS users, right? No, if you want the latest security updates, you have to be on the next development branch. So I saw them take this. Uh, the latest WebKit version is 2.12.3. Uh, they took it into their development distro a few, days, a few weeks ago. They tagged it with the security issues that we fixed. So they know about the security issues. But they just never pushed it towards uh, uh, LTS users. So I'm not sure what they're planning to do with that, if they're waiting for more vulnerabilities to pop up. More, more likely, I think they're just planning to never update it. Uh, why do I have Ubuntu 15.10 on here? It's uh, end of life two weeks ago, uh, so why is it interesting to talk about? Uh, we haven't, it, 60 public vulnerabilities, we haven't announced any vulnerabilities in the last two weeks, folks. They just uh, didn't care at all uh, about uh, their uh, non-LTS distribution. So what happened here was the WebKit 2 package was in universe, not main, because nothing in, that was installed by default in Ubuntu at the time depended on WebKit 2. Uh, so they did that transition. They transitioned all of the applications that are installed by default in one release cycle, which was pretty impressive. Uh, the, but the problem is uh, packages that are not in main, they don't give security support for. It's a little known fact about Ubuntu. Anything you have to install with apt-get is probably in universe. It doesn't get security updates from Canonical. In contrast to basically any other Linux distribution ever, we support everything in the repositories in Fedora or Debian. Get, they all get security updates. That's not how it works in Ubuntu. Uh, the old LTS distribution uh, is stuck on WebKit 1, so there's nothing they can do. That's bad, too. Debian. Uh, the situation in Debian is pretty similar to Ubuntu. They don't do any security updates for stable versions of Debian. They don't do any updates at all. Uh, if you're running Debian testing, you get updates until it freezes for the next stable release. That should happen in the next couple of months. If you want security support after then, you have to switch to the unstable uh, distribution. Jesse backports, it is a thing. You can enable the backports repository to get WebKit updates for Debian stable. Uh, that fixes most of the vulnerabilities you see here in the counting in this slide. Uh, but not all of them. They, they've fallen behind again. I, I, I don't have any good comments to say about this, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, they, uh, the backports, they have a WebKit version from March. So can you imagine going from March until uh, August of this year without getting any Chromium or Firefox updates, right? That's, that's crazy, right? So that's the situation in Debian, even if you have a backports repository enabled. And the older Debians have even older WebKits. So what's, what's uh, worth mentioning about Debian, though, uh, uh, they actually uh, have a policy about this. Uh, they're the only distribution that I know of which has a uh, WebKit policy. Uh, the policy here, you can read it in full, they're basically saying it's too hard for us to update WebKit. So that's why we don't do it. Uh, th this is in their release notes. Uh, so because every user who downloads Debian reads their release notes, right? Every user knows all about this. And therefore, every user knows not to depend on, uh, knows not to use WebKit browsers against untrusted websites, right? 
No, of course not. I get bug reports from users using Epiphany 3.4 or whatever all the time from three or four years ago. It's have no updates in years. Uh, but um, what's interesting about this policy is uh, the reasoning in it that's used to justify not updating actually no longer applies. Uh, the, key, the key sentence here is they say, additionally, library interdependencies make it impossible to update to newer upstream releases. Uh, this was true at the time the policy was written, about, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Uh, since then, we realized that, well, library interdependencies made it impossible for Debian to update to newer upstream releases. So what we did was we stopped bumping our uh, library dependency requirements. Uh, right now, you can build WebKit GDK with whatever uh, dependency versions were current at the time we switched to the WebKit 2 API. Uh, we are very, very conservative about bumping those dependencies. If a dependency bump causes a problem for your distro, get in touch with us. We will fix it. We will fix it to make it possible for you to get these updates out to your users. So I, I don't think this reasoning is valid anymore. So why not update if, if it's possible to update without needing new library versions? What are the real reasons why distros are not doing this properly? Some distros are just old, they're stuck on WebKit 1, they have no choice in the matter. I mean, I guess they could hire someone to go through and backport all the security bugs to WebKit 1, but it's hard, it's a lot of work. Uh, the the main uh, not paying attention is another big reason. Any any non major distro, any anything that's derived from another distro, the people who make the little distros, they can't keep up with security issues. They rely on the bigger distros to do so. The bigger distros, in this case, I'm talking about Debian and Ubuntu. They choose not to update because they're afraid of regressions. Uh, is this a reasonable fear? Kind of. Uh, so the, the, the issue here is that with browsers like uh, Firefox and Chromium, those are leaf packages, right? If something goes wrong in a Firefox update, Firefox is the only thing in the distro that's going to be broken. Chromium is the only thing in the distro that's going to be broken. Uh, with WebKit, you saw earlier, tons of stuff depends on it, right? Uh, distros are not static linking to WebKit. If something goes wrong in a WebKit update, all of those could break, or some subset of those. Uh, in practice, we've been doing uh, uh, WebKit updates in Arch and Fedora quite successfully. Uh, I don't think we've ever had any regressions in any application other than a web browser, where regressions are expected, right, and only affect a subset of web pages. So I think that's, accept and that's an acceptable trade-off for security updates. The one issue uh, we did have that affected something not a web browser, though, and this, this is to illustrate what could go wrong. Uh, is uh, Antigross Linux, which is an Arch derivative. Uh, they have a login screen that actually uses WebKit to render uh, graphics. Uh, they decided instead of using GTK or whatever to make the login screen pretty, they were going to use WebKit to do that. Uh, so we released a WebKit security update, actually, a security update that fixed a flaw that allowed local uh, pages to access uh, the uh, what's called the local storage database. Websites can websites have several databases in the the web browser that they use to track you. Uh, and so we blocked access to local storage. The login screen can no longer access this data. It just crashed on start. Now all these poor Antigross users were out of luck until they uh, managed to update their system from the command line. So that's what can go wrong in a WebKit update. Uh, you can literally not lose the ability to log into your computer. So, so they're, they're, it's, it's not completely crazy that they refuse to update. Um, solutions for this, uh, just do it and just go with the update and test it. Leave it in updates testing for a while would have caught that fine. They only had a problem because they pushed it straight to users. Uh, another possible solution is to like have two different WebKit packages. You can have a stable one that uh, most of the applications link against, and you can have an unstable one that's used uh, only for web browsers, and you can get the security updates to the web browser users. It's, it's not rocket science, right? We can, there, there's solutions for this, uh, but uh, unfortunately, distros just don't care. All right, why not patch downstream? This is the last argument that I've heard most often. Uh, uh, I've, I've been getting complaints that we uh, are not providing distributions the information they need to apply security patches downstream without releasing new updates, without actually taking the new upstream version. 
So there's a couple of reasons for this. The, the first of which is that I don't have, I don't think we have permission from Apple to give you individual security patches. We just release uh, tarball updates. Uh, you can look in the revision log to see all the individual commits, but we do not tag individual commits with CV identifiers. Uh, that's, um, that's a policy that is outside of our control. Uh, why else? Highly impractical. Uh, you saw the numbers of vulnerabilities here. That's like 150 vulnerabilities in the past two years. Uh, you need highly specialized expertise to backport those to extremely old versions of WebKit to handle the large number, very large number of uh, version control conflicts you're going to have in that process. And also, how are you going to decide which patches to backport? Uh, the best way to do that is to just backport what we've already backported upstream, then you, you might as well just take the new upstream version, right? Okay, so uh, one last thing. Uh, this is almost the end of my presentation. I just want to leave you with a somewhat uh, more uplifting note. Uh, as, as bad as the security update situation for anything not Arch, Fedora, Magia is, it's not the end of the world, right? I don't recommend using WebKit browsers in any other distributions, but uh, if you choose to do so, you're still relatively safe. You're using Linux, right? It's not, you're not using Windows. You're not going to get hit by drive-by exploits. Um, the, the, what you really need to be concerned about is the type of vulnerabilities that are not platform dependent, man-in-the-middle attacks, uh, which are going to be the same whether you're getting security updates for WebKit or not. Uh, the, the one thing to be concerned about here is that most applications, older applications that are using WebKit 1, they're not doing property less certificate verification, uh, the, uh, which is extremely bad if you're using them as a web browser. Uh, but um, that's, that's a very common situation in free software. We have a lot of under-maintained modules that uh, the maintainers can't keep up when people report issues like this to them. Okay, uh, that was a question very quick run uh, through the basics of why WebKit stuff is not getting security updates. David, do we have time for questions? OK. You. Uh, so um, I actually have two questions. So uh, first one is, is more like a comment than the question. Uh, so um, I've been wondering if it makes sense to, to branch uh, WebKit GTK at the same time as Apple does their branches so that uh, to be able to share uh, uh, backports and, uh, and security fixes. So let me answer that before you go to the next question. We have considered that. I have actually suggested that. Uh, the answer I received was no, it doesn't make sense. Apple uh, branches less frequently than we do. Uh, we branch every six months on the GNOME release cycle. Uh, which works well for us because we can get new features out every six months. Apple is uh, much slower than that. They do it every year or two. So we don't want to wait that long for, to do our branches. Um, I also don't think that's actually a real issue with uh, the security situation. The only real effect of not following their branches is it takes us a couple weeks to go through after an Apple security advisory to prepare our own. Uh, we have to backport the patches separately and do our releases separately, but uh, I, I think that's an acceptable trade-off for us. We're keeping up with that. Uh, with, to within, we're no further behind than one month at any time, and I think that's acceptable. Your second question? Okay, thank you. And uh, the second question is that um, uh, we are considering putting uh, WebKit uh, 2 into RHEL, and, um, but we have a dependency problem there. It's not a library dependency, but it's a compiler dependency that uh, WebKit... GCC 4.9. Okay. Yeah. So, so, he, so it's not a library dependency, so it doesn't affect you at runtime. Uh, but indeed, uh, the Apple developers like to use new C++ features, and we do too. Uh, so uh, what... Uh, so uh, although we are very careful about bumping library dependency versions, uh, we are not so careful about bumping the compiler requirement. So it's no longer possible to compile uh, WebKit with the old version of GCC that's in Rails 7. So uh, there's two options here. Uh, the first option, which worked well uh, for SUSE, is uh, they have a set of patches in SUSE that I helped with uh, to make it possible to compile WebKit with GCC 4.8. Uh, that's worked well um, uh, for the current WebKit 2 release. 
Uh, but I don't recommend that course of action because it's not going to work after our next release. It's too hard to maintain GCC 4.8 support. So I, I recommend you just use a different compiler uh, to build it than you have in your distribution. That's, uh, that's permissible, at least in Fedora. I don't know if you're allowed to do that in RHEL, but you can probably you can look into that. Uh, but, but yeah, we're, we, we, uh, if we add any dependencies that make life tough for you at runtime, let us know, and I'll try to help with that. But the compiler requirement is, that's going to be a requirement. OK, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, so the first slide was uh, I found most interesting where you mentioned uh, Rust uh, using a different programming language for the uh, for WebKit or for the for the engine. Um, the idea is to eliminate a whole class of bugs instead of just uh, fixing them uh, as they come up. Uh, for example, the read after read after free would would not exist with Rust. Uh, but I also think, given the proper type system, uh, which can which allows you to prove stuff about your your program, if the specification is all right, uh, you could eliminate also buffer uh, overruns and underruns and all this stuff. Uh, is re-implementing with a proper type system and proper language support something you're really looking at? Or is this something uh, for also other applications, security uh, relevant applications for the future? So the answer is no, we're not looking into that because it would be a tremendous amount of work. Uh, Mozilla is working on this, but they decided the best way to do it is to just throw out their entire rendering engine and start from scratch. And that's what the Servo project is all about. So uh, Servo is a young experimental web engine from Mozilla. It's written in Rust. It is completely immune to the classes of vulnerabilities that attackers used to take, usually use to take control of your computer. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, right? But it's going to dramatically limit the problems. Uh, so the, the issue with Servo is that it's still very, very new. It's experimental. It's not production ready by any means. And it's going to be a very long time before it's usable to build production-ready web browsers. But it's a very interesting research project. And I think, uh, I think 10 years from now, it, it could very well replace uh, uh, web engines, the insecure web engines that we're using right now. So I'm, I'm very excited for that project. All right. Uh, are we out of time? Yeah, I think that's all we have time for. So thank you very much, Michael.